those hard sacrifices like I remember once on a background like I I did something and I and I was really proud of myself like I really like yeah. made a pretty thing and and you went this was meant to be blurry now this is beautiful oh. like, I can't blur it as much you know? <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Mar and I'm communicating to you through, well, through my home in Tokyo. I founded an animation studio and today we'll talk animation and backgrounds. Hello, Catherine. Hello. Hello. Hopefully I don't sound like a robot today. Uh, my name is Catherine. I've been here once before. Uh, I mainly do freelance art. Um, mainly for Mar as a background artist, uh, but I've also done concept work uh, for, honestly, a whole bunch of projects that don't necessarily have much to do with one another, but uh, still very enjoyable. I also do illustration, and uh, that's sort of where my enjoyment of art and my uh, interest for background painting comes from. Catherine is an amazing artist. We've known each other for years now. We've both okay. grown together in career and in art skills themselves. And I'm super happy that we have participated in many projects. Actually, very soon we'll start, when we start a conversation about backgrounds, background art, we will also share some pieces. And many of what I'm sharing, it's actually from Catherine in different projects we've worked on together. Now, what's this debate we're going to talk about today? So you have seen paintings of landscapes. You have seen illustrations. You may have heard about what concept art is. And when you see animation, which is something quite related to our channel, you will see that usually the character characters behind them have also a painting. Now, this is what we will call background. Like, I keep saying backgrounds because I'm really into animation, but actually should say most likely illustration or painting. Um, but that's what we will be comparing. Like, is it the same? Like, for example, please paint a sky. Like, what is it different to paint a sky for animation, for concept art, for illustration, for a children's book? So that's the thing that we will discuss. And if you're into art or you are actually into one of these areas or one are in one, want to switch to the other, I think it will be a very interesting conversation. Or first, shall we describe what each thing is? Like, what's illustration, what's concept art, what's background for animation, maybe? How would you define them, Catherine? Because you've done all of it, it at one point or another. True. Too. So when it comes to illustration, uh, especially its goal is to express something. Like, it could be a story moment. It could be itself, you know, there's a... Typically, an illustration has a story, or it can be um, defined as simply a very rendered piece of art. Um, whereas concept art has a much more, and, and background art as well, I would say, they have a much more functional, practical goal where, um, and where concept art, its goal is to communicate something it is to explain something the background is there to it accompanies yeah. the story yeah you know uh it is the setting where the action takes place you know it itself is not the main character now you're saying what i'm sharing right so basically i'm sharing the concept art which is basically where we were deciding on which colors would we use for different scenes of an animated production? One version, pastel, no, sorry, one version more like natural than pastel, than uh, drama. <laughs> like, very saturated. And in these cases, as you see, there's no many detail. Like, concepts usually don't have a lot of detail. They just ha are there to make, like, a quick impression of what you will do, you will see when things will be later put into detail. Uh, you said something related to that. It's it's telling a story, right? An illustration, like you have the whole piece telling something. Maybe it's just a landscape. Maybe it's a landscape with characters. However, in animation, it's the same. You have maybe just a landscape, maybe just the characters. The thing is, as a background artist, you have to combine with the 
artist doing those characters, for example, on top of it. And maybe it's like, okay, purposefully, I have to make everything blurry and not stand out. You're like on a collaboration, if that makes sense, to transmit that message. You have to make sure that the colors match with like prior and later scenes on that same forest, for example. Things in animated background will also move. <laughs> yeah. So um, you have to make things that they will match with the character. I mean, do we see the ground of this forest? Will the characters step on there? Will we have layers in front or after the character? on how many layers and how much separation of elements does there need to be? Yeah. Will the shadows be moving? Do we see the shadows? Oh, do I did I paint everything with enough detail up to the edge of this frame? Um, so that, that was one thing, like the focus is the same. You're communicating a story. The implementation, however, like how you have to work to get there, it's very, very different. This background is for something that will move, right? Something will move on the background. Maybe the background itself will move. Mm -hmm. um, what things do you have to be careful about in these cases? Like, oh, what's my different? goodness. Like, layering, 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 layering. <laughs> and also, we have uh, you, have to be, you have to be very careful about your edges as well. So the edges of those elements. So um, you also have to be careful about, so you need to think about each thing that will move. Mm -hmm. Where is it placed? And what are the implications of that thing moving? So to give a practical example. I'm showing an example uh, here that I think you can use. Oh, from, wait a uh, minute. I'm, yeah. I'm going to switch. Yeah, so this is a screenshot oh. from Watch the River Run, animation we did together. And there were a lot of layers here. Tell, tell us what happened here. What did you have to think about? Oh, my goodness. So uh, for this one, so the, the setting of this shot is that uh, we are in the children's room and we are looking at a beautiful display of lights showing stars and and you know just fun shapes like a like a yep. hot air balloon or i don't know like a bird mm -hmm. or yeah rabbit clouds yeah. you know i remember that for this one i think you asked me for a few variations like two sets of colors just to try and see what's going to work but another thing that's really tricky with this one is that we are in a room which means that we have walls and those walls have angles where they meet. I would say that for this background, for example, we were dealing with, okay, like we're in a room, as you see, like some elements, like the bed doesn't, is floating, for example. I don't know if uh, people can see it, that the bed, for example, uh, is floating, no, things like it, that. So there's a enough. frame. So Catherine would work with a frame and then everything inside the frame, which you're not seeing now, needs to be detailed but actually things are more open so we can get the whole picture of it or we can move things around so that's one thing thinking about the char characters that will be there obviously like this bed is on top of the characters in this case for example but then the character this bed is also on top of this one or maybe this is cut in the edge so these characters are not moving by the way so that was an easy one the windows, this that you see is not it's painting on top, like actually it's like the room and then behind it there's the sky. So you have to think of layering order as well, not just on having different layers. So there's a lot to think about when you're working on backgrounds on the terms of how do you separate the elements. Actually, I guess that's that's something I admire from you, Catherine. Like how do you because usually when I do illustration, I do a whole a thing, I do a whole thing. I imagine the characters in the background, everything. And then I have to ask you, please tone it down. You haven't seen I... the characters. I was like, okay, please do this sky and this uh, land. But on top of it, we'll have many characters. We'll have other trees. We'll have other elements. Like, how how do you decide which colors, like up to which degree do you can you add contrast and so on? Um, 
honestly, a lot of it is uh, me figuring it out as I go. Um, for example, I'm going to keep in mind the context of the scene of what's going on because, you know, um, I have access to the storyboard. I have access to the color keys. Mm -hmm. So I can get a sense of like, what's going on? What's the intensity of the scene? And what is the scene about? So knowing what the scene is about tells you what your focus is. And knowing where your focus is allows you to know where does the intensity go? Mm -hmm. Where do you do less unless you want to have like a little story moment in the background somewhere, <laughs> like, a, like a little bit of dappled light on this delicate yeah. flower. Like, oh, like I yeah. want the light to shine through this bottle and it has this little glow, you know, like mm -hmm. those are all small story moments that can happen. And then sometimes I get it wrong and I, and I submit something and you go, Ooh, like, let's, uh, Let's make this yeah. change. You know, it's like, more usual. It? Yeah, it's more usual that I'll ask you to tone down than to tone up, like to add contrast yeah. and so on. It's more because it's natural that you're trying to make a beautiful illustration on itself. Yes. Can we talk about, um, yeah, like ah. sharpness and deciding colors and so on, like textures, like okay. level of render? Mm. What would you feel is different or similar from like the different uh, medias? You mean between, like you know, concept, illustration, illustration and... background, like what do yeah. you have to think? How do you have to think different when you're making a uh, background for animation? So for backgrounds, I feel like it's a lot more straightforward because unless you're working on a production that's very out there and you're sort of breaking the laws, like, um, well, actually, uh, oh, how, how do I not remember the name? It's, uh, it's the one with the glass that's shattering. You, you pulled the picture. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Shabby. Oh my goodness. He, my yeah, pronunciation Shabby, yeah. will be better. I have yes, something like right from that. Um, this one. So this is a concept by the way, behind the characters. So this means the creepy kid. In in <laughs> that, things. in most um in most productions, if you're doing backgrounds, you are bound by realistic sets of rules. You are bound by perspective unless you choose to break it, and that's you know that yeah. that can work. Sometimes it's necessary. Um, mm -hmm. You are bound, you know, and because you're bound by that, it means that, you know, the things that are closer to you are crisper, they're more defined, there's more contrast, and the things that are far away uh, take the the tint of the sky, It uh, there's atmosphere, atmospheric perspective that happens, yep. things get blurrier. Whereas for an illustration, the only thing that matters is your focus. And that's something that you decide hopefully before you start <laughs> the, uh, the process of rendering. <laughs> Otherwise, you have a harsh battle ahead of you. Um, and then that, that tells you where to put the level of detail. Mm -hmm. uh, as, the, as the illustrator director, you choose, like, I will be more defined here. I will be less defined here. I will lose this edge. I will blur this thing. And then for concept art, the goal being to communicate, you can't really leave anything blurry unless the concept is really just mood, atmosphere, what vibe are we going for? But in general, if you're making a character, if you're making a piece of armor, if you're making, you might be one cog in the machine, you know, like you're one person in the pipeline and you, your goal is to give something to someone else that they will use to produce an asset. So you might, your 2D art might go to a 3D modeler who then, if something doesn't work, if something is unclear in your concept, ding, 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 like wrong, your, your phone wrong, is going to be wrong. Abort. <laughs> all yeah. day. Like you cannot yeah. leave ambiguity, whereas there is room for ambiguity in background and in illustration. 
So um, I mostly brought things related to illustration and to concept art. Mm -hmm. So um, so as we can see uh, here, we have very clearly an illustration and you can tell that it focuses on a story. The rendering is also uh, more delicate than it would be if this were simply a concept piece. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like if I start zooming in, like you can see like the like the fabric, you know, the the tadpoles, the jewelry, the the face, you know, like there's a lot of details going on. But I do have some more concepty pieces that illustrate that it's really more about communication. So for example, mm -hmm. let me take you to my wonderful cafe for squirrels called chestnuts. <laughs> So here Please we have. Do. We want to <laughs> see it. We need so to. So chestnuts, like the the first, uh, the first idea. So as you can see here, it started from like basically I took a different piece of concept art and I started like just tracing over it, not to steal what they were doing, but to understand it better. So I think this was from a James Bond movie. Mm -hmm. or something like that. And so I was just taking into account, like, what are they dressing up the environment with? And so I, I saw, you know, like the, the couches, I saw the tables, the different layers, the windowed railing, um, the the shapes on the walls, you know, like the, the moldings and all of that. And then, and then I started getting my own ideas and I started like, well, what if I do this? What if I do this? And then, you know, I ended up with something here, like the first draft, which looks already nothing like the, the piece that I was looking at, but I, I incorporate like the idea of there's, there's a central piece, like there's a central area and then there's going to be this and that and the layers. I want to have layers. There's going to be two floors to it. Uh, I'm going to have a tree um, oh. with a spiraling staircase around it. And so then I made a 3D model in Blender just with very rough shapes because I'm not that good at Blender. Um, and then you can see the different elements like you can see like I drew over it uh, and you have, you know, like a, a fire roasting, like a chestnuts roasting area. You have the little balcony and they're shaped like acorns, of course, huge squirrels, you know, yes. they're, I need the I need the squirrel patrons, uh, the shape of the of the couches, like they the, the back of it, they're kind of like a squirrel tail. Um, and then, you know, like I made a more uh, colored, I brought some color to it. Oh, and, beautiful. Uh, made some changes as well, just to, to, to showcase it once it's all nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. But so yes, you can see that the idea in here is really, it's not to illustrate, it's not really to make a pretty picture, it's to communicate what we have, where it is, uh, what's the scale of it, what's the context. Um, I have some other concepts here. Thumbnailing is a huge part of making an, illust an illustration or, you know, doing a concept shot. Because sometimes, you know, like you can have a, a piece of concept that's so beautiful and so pretty that most people would say, oh, this is an illustration, actually. Well, <laughs> when... <laughs> Yeah, everything is illustration, uh, but <laughs> everything is illustration. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's where you, you know, like you get to play with different ideas, like you get to experience experiment with different shapes, you know, different uh, different focuses. And like here's another piece that's definitely more concepty, where I'm, yeah. where really I'm figuring out what this character is. So this is my little original character called Zot and uh, he's this little child who is who dresses up in this you know this big space suit and looks like a like some sort of wizard ominous person and you don't really know what's going on and I also figured out like oh well what's under it what we were talking about so what's under the shoulder you know what's mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. what happens there you know 
What if the camera so is underneath? Under thing. Like, is it like at what level does this cloth fly? Because there's the legs of the little guy, right? So exactly. It's so important. So, it's so, that's, important. so that's part of the that's part of the joke. Like maybe so in my mind, you know, this was going to be a character in a video game, maybe, and. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought maybe wind, like there's a moment where the wind flows, you know, and this character tries to sound like really serious and really, you know, like, like I'm an adult kind of thing. Take me seriously. And uh, and then there's a gust of wind or something. And then woo, you just see like the tiny feet, you know, like underneath, <laughs> like the big cute. canes. <laughs> uh, I in my mind, you know, like you were going to you were going to buy stuff from this character by bringing them marshmallows because you know they're a kid so they they like sweets and so mm -hmm. you just give them marshmallows um i love right. that one. Oh, yeah. it's it's my funny little guy mm -hmm. just want to take a quick look ah yes. so as you can see like this what is i a, think this concept is a moment. art I think about this and then a tiny guy, to, so we know the scale. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, here. The, the tiny. To have a tiny guy with a cape. You know? With a cape or a guy yes. and a horse. That's also one. Because if there's a horse, we can even know like, oh, but this is a big guy or this is a child. No, no, we have. Yeah. The tiny warrior that tell us yeah. how yeah. massive things exactly. are. Or maybe this is for is the square world. <laughs> it's oh, very tiny. The squirrel world is in danger. Chestnuts is threatened. Someone needs to go <laughs> and deal with whatever this is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so yep. we can see, you know, here that this is like, uh, it's very clear. It communicates like, what's the focus? Where is it? Mm -hmm. And where are we? What sorts of things do we have around? Like, but we're not, also, we're not really sure. Like this would be something that I would call like an establishing piece of concept. Yes. Just this is a moment that happens, but we haven't really decided, you know, what are these like these things that stick out of the ground? Yep. Are they are they like burnt trees? Like rem yep. remnants of burnt trees? Is this a swamp? And then there's like these these structures are these ruins of a lost yes. civilization, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know something bad is happening. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's we're not really restoring nature in the forest. We're we're destroying something here. Like yeah. this and then, one like, up, boom. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and you can see that the the level of rendering is um not existent really <laughs> when you take a look at the. Uh, when you take a closer look, it's all very rough. Interestingly Just enough, rough. if you were to animate <laughs> this, most likely you would be you know you would need to render everything, and then I would say, let's blur that. <laughs> so. uh, or you know, like I I'd spend like like I don't know like this this piece in the corner, you know, like, yeah, like it's a castle over here. Or, like yeah. I I really spent time. Oh, what is it? I come up with this really cool idea, and then. Tsh, uh, you know what? We're gonna cut the frame here. We're not gonna <laughs> see the background like to this to this side. Or it was supposed to pan up to here, yeah. but actually, eh. nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, be on, yeah. to be honest, I'm the, usually acting as the director, and I do that even to myself. Like Which I will paint, necessary. like I will paint things around the side things, animate them, lay out, ask for everyone to yep. do it. I would correct them, yeah, change them, Extra step. and then they're not on screen. And so that that's that happens. Uh, to move on, so I've gathered basically what I consider to be different um, expressions of illustration, because illustration, when initially when I thought about illustration, I thought Magic the Gathering. I thought, you know, Pokemon cards. Um, and there's actually a lot more to illustration than that. So to give a few examples, so we have here, you know, like this is, um, this is a more traditional uh, illustration, I would say, like there's, there's some sort of mystical uh, character in this mysterious setting, you know, and there's mood and there's fun lighting and there's props and it takes forever to render and it's 
fine. <laughs> uh, but then you also have stuff like this, which is a character illustration. So you can have, you know, you can have a character that's meant for concept art where you are defining the look of a character and then you can have a character illustration where you're just producing a character for the sole purpose of introducing that character or that class, that race, that people. Um, and this is the kind of thing that you would find in, for example, um, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Pathfinder, uh, which is Dungeons and Dragons, anyway. Um, and so, but the same thing could be said for, for some props. I do have some somewhere, wait a minute, like here. This is a fun, ambiguous example. Like, is this concept art or is it an illustration? Because the one you I, use could, it. Mm -hmm. I could, exactly. The only difference is where you use it, to be honest, because I could argue, yeah, this is an illustration. Look at the rendering, look at, you know, like there's uh, some very clear like choice in the lighting. And then you have like the mm -hmm. detail of like the blade, you know, the light going through and putting the color in the shadow um, there's a lot of detail on the handle you can tell what kind of material this is but then you could also say this is just high level concept art where you know you communicate yep. the type of material you communicate the prop you communicate the shape of it and you communicate you know the lighting in this case helps you communicate what the material is in this case we know that the blade is some sort of crystal because the light goes through so mm -hmm. You could argue for both. And so we talked about, you know, more traditional, whoops, I did not could do that. You can talk about more traditional illustrations, you can talk about character illustrations, and then this would be, I would consider something more of a storybook illustration where you have a story moment again, but there, there's a, there you go, let's zoom in. There's also a lot of empty space all around here. And that's not, by accident, it's because there's probably text going on there. Uh -huh. Or it could also be uh, what they were mentioning around then, like a story bit. <clears throat> yeah. It is basically you take like a like a storyboard section and you sort of illustrate how it would look like. And because the characters will fly through it, that's also why you have this space to let people focus on people moving to the to the battle, you know, like <laughs> to that direction. Yeah. And so yeah, on. So exactly. I can see this as a movie shot that explains me how what we will see on screen later. Yeah. So. But illustrations are about messages, you know? Exactly. They're, exactly. There's, like, there's something you're trying, like, honestly, in all of art, there is something you're trying to communicate. Yeah. It really is a matter of purpose, I yeah. think. So there you go. And then you have also something that's more like a, like, wish fulfillment for mm -hmm. yourself. Like this is uh, something that I did for me. This is my character from Final Fantasy 14 because I like Final Fantasy 14. And <laughs> I wanted to, I have this character it's who's beautiful. a dancer and I loved the flow of the dancer and I felt like I wanted to illustrate how it felt to play that class, you know, to play that job in, uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, and so I really like the design of the character. I don't have, I don't own the design of the costume. You know, like, this is all mm -hmm. uh, Square yeah, Enix. Fan but, art, I guess. Yeah, so it is. It's fan art, uh, to be quite honest, for me because it's my character, yeah. and I wanted to yeah, be yeah, my yeah, character yeah. in a pose. Yeah. But there's also an an entire category of illustration that's you know you to find this for commissions especially, but it's like I call this a wish fulfillment, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, you know, even simpler, like simpler designs, like this one is, you know, quite complex, but simpler designs too. Like yeah. this works as well. Like just a fun, like postcard kind of, uh, kind of illustration where you just want to make people feel mm -hmm. good. And that's all that. That's all that really matters. Okay, so let's uh, let 
uh, Catherine Ress, thank you very much to everyone that's watching. Uh, so again, thank you very much for your time, Catherine. And I hope to see you again. Like, shall we bring Catherine again? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>